Good morning, guys. Happy New Year's Day 2022. We made it through 2021. We're still here. So maybe I should say good afternoon because I get a feeling that a lot of you guys might have just got up and it's a little later. But, you know, grab a cup of coffee <laughs> or a pot. All right. So, yep, you saw yesterday that I gave you my track record for 2021. There's, eh, okay. But in the interest of putting my neck out on the line again, I'm going to give you my 2022 predictions. And again, yes, these are all things I think are possible, maybe even probable, but, you know, like I said yesterday, take it as you see it. Act on it. Take it for entertainment purposes only, whatever it would be. And again, we'll come back at the end of the year and see how I did. So, all right. Number one, the thing that's on everybody's mind, COVID. COVID will end this year, okay? But there's going to be something else, all right? COVID's going to end, but it's not going to be because of vaccines or masks or anything, but basically because the severity of the virus is going to dwindle down to practically nothing. However, okay, I think something else is going to be introduced to ramp up the fear factor in its place. And considering we've already heard about, oh, I don't know, bird flu and uh, hemorrhagic fever, you know, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, the media is going to start pushing the fear of these. I'm expecting sometime throughout this year, we're going to see another shutdown of the economy and lockdowns all over again. All right. You know, Travis over at the prepared homestead had a real, he coined a pretty good comment, I guess, if you will. 2022 is actually 2020, the sequel. In other words, 2022. So prediction number one, Expect to be restricted in your movement sometime this year. Yay. <laughs> Number two, cyber terrorism. Okay, this is going to be the year of the hacker. It's This is going to be bigger than Colonial, bigger than ADP, bigger than Kasaya. All right. I still think those are small potatoes based on maybe, maybe a practice run for these cyber terrorists. Okay. 2022, I expect to see them do something bigger. Maybe go after the banks. You know, after all, they collected millions upon millions of dollars last year in these ransomware attacks. You know, as uh, I forget what the guy's name was. I want to say it was Willie Brown. Uh, said, why do you rob banks? Because that's where the money is. You know, so Yeah. <laughs> Expect to see cyber attacks this year. Hopefully, we don't get one on the grid. Okay. Number three, my favorite thing to talk about all the time, the economy. All right. And I know last year, eh. <laughs> but this is what I'm figuring this year. Gold and silver are going to be your best performing asset classes in 2022. I'm not going to add crypto in there for the simple reason there's way too much freaking volatility in there. You could say crypto's doing great, and two weeks later, crypto's in the tank. So, you know, if you all are into crypto, that's up to you. You all know my thoughts on it. All right. Besides gold and silver, and figure this, I think gold's probably going to break 2,000 sometime this year. Silver should get back at least to 28, maybe up to 30. Okay, but I'm going to say 28. Don't forget about copper, and there's a good reason I say this. The new president of Chile, all right, Chile's the largest copper mining company in the or country. I do that all the time. Country in the world, okay, doesn't like mining, all right. So that's going to make the industrial metal that much more scarce. If he doesn't want to allow mining in Chile, then we don't have any. You know, when something's scarce, then it becomes more valuable. And think where copper is. Copper isn't basically anything electric, plumbing, you know, whatever it would be. All right. As for the stock market, I figure we're going to see a huge drop. I know I've said this for a while, and while it hasn't happened yet, it's gonna. All right. Right now, the market is about uh, pricing at about 215% of market value to GDP. 
okay? And fair value should, is usually about 120%. Remember, market's price on future earnings. You know, if they priced on current earnings, it would be 100%, but they price on future, so therefore it's 120. So seeing a drop of 55% in the market, just to get us back to fair value, is very possible. Guess where that puts the Dow? At about 16,400. And yup, I've been saying for a long time, we'd be under 20,000. As for the bond market, 1.75 is still the tipping point for bonds. I expect us to kind of get there and not break it because the Fed will do whatever it can with manipulation to keep the bond market from going crazy. Unless, of course, the Fed starts raising rates, which that's also expected as well. But that's a different, that's not free market, that's different. Okay. Number four, crime. All right, face it. Defund the police is a disaster. No kidding there, Sparky. We told you. Okay. 16 major cities saw record homicide rates in 2021. Retailers have said th uh, theft is at crisis levels. Stores are now posting armed security guards. I mean, if you saw in the last couple of days, hy V, the grocery store, has come out and said they will have armed guards in the grocery store. Really? Can you imagine somebody's going to go in there, steal a loaf of bread, and could potentially get shot? That's where we are, guys. Okay. Armed guards in a grocery store. All right. It's not looking like things are going to calm down any anytime soon in 2022. Okay. The problem when you have all these armed guards in the stores is when the thieves can't steal from stores, they're going to start stealing from us. All right. So be extra, extra vigilant when you're in parking lots. When you're driving home, okay, keep your eye on the rearview mirror. Make sure you're not being followed on your way home, okay? I expect crime rates to rise in 2022. Five, everybody's favorite, politics, okay? First off, yes, the 2022, the 2022 elections will happen, okay? The GOP is going to take both houses of Congress, my guess is 53 seats in the Senate and 250 plus in the House. Okay. Now, sure, this isn't really a stretch that I'm saying the GOP is going to take it. The bigger question is going to be who is elected. Will it be rhinos or will it be patriots? Will we see another something like the Tea Party movement? Okay. Will we see the Christy Gnomes, the Marjorie Taylor Greens, that type of candidate be elected, or will we see the Mitch McConnells and the Kevin McCarthy's? That's the catch, all right? If it turns out it's a bunch of rhinos like Mitch McConnell, then it's going to be business as usual, and government is going to screw us every which way but loose, all right? But if we get more MAGA-centric people in Congress, then maybe we can start fixing government. Not fixing the country, that's up to us but fixing the government. In other words, getting their nose out of our business. Okay. Number six, politics two. You're going to love this one. Joe Biden will step down or be removed. And my guess is it'll be sometime in the early fall, around September, October. Okay. If my previous projection holds true, I expect this to happen. The Democrats are already a massively splintered party between the communists and the, gee, I'm a moderate bullshit, okay? There's going to be a bunch of blame as to why the left loses both houses of Congress, and it's all going to fall on Joe's shoulders. Now, the left desperately wants a woman in the White House, okay? I mean, we, identity politics is the only thing they have. Obviously, they're uh, policies are an utter disaster. So we want a woman in the White House. Well, they either push Joe out or convince Joe to step down and they get the radical president that they want in, in uh, the cackling hen. All right. Now, the reason I say I bet they do this before the midterms, uh, because, you know, you're going to know by polls how, how bad you're going to get slaughtered you know, that close. And they're going to push Joe out. But they're going to do it before the midterms because while they still hold Congress, well, maybe they do it afterwards because they still hold Congress for another month. 
but they're going to do it somewhere thereabouts because while they still hold Congress, remember, Congress has to approve the vice presidential candidate. So if Kamala becomes president, she's going to nominate a VP and Congress has to approve it. They certainly aren't going to wait till the Republicans control Congress and let the Republicans decide who's going to be the VP. All right. So here's my thoughts, scary as this may be. Hillary is your VP. She's trying to get back in, in, in the fray, guys, if you haven't noticed. All right. So basically what I'm thinking here is you can expect complete turmoil in uh, Washington by next Thanksgiving as the left gets extremely radical in pushing their agenda. Number seven, population. This is another interesting one. This is worldwide. Migration around the world is going to become a huge problem. All right. Food is going to be a major issue for migration. People are not going to have food in some areas of the world. They're going to force to go where the food is. All right. Then add war or the threat of war. Ukraine, Taiwan, Turkey, anything like this. You know, anywhere potentially in Europe. Europe is going to see huge influxes of people from the Middle East and the Baltic regions. Okay. The U.S. is going to continue seeing a revolving door on the southern border, basically from everywhere in the world. All right. This is going to cause even larger food and housing scarcities. So what I'm figuring here is expect to see Europeans move westward, you know, i.e. Germany. You're going to start seeing a flood of people. Uh, and then, like I said, everybody around the world is going to try to get into Mexico somehow so they can get into the U.S. So expect to see that. Number eight, food. Food is going to get scarce. There are still 90 cargo ships awaiting uh, unloading over in the Port of Los Angeles. Okay, The Grand Solar Minimum is definitely affecting weather patterns. Yes, talk about harp, whatever you want. Okay. But, you know, here it is. It's New Year's Day. It's 65 degrees or will be 65 degrees here in Tennessee. Okay. Some of my summer flowers are actually blooming, believe it or not. Flowers, not just, not just the leaves, the flowers. There's a couple of purple flowers on some of my stuff. Okay. There's massive snowstorms in the West. December tornadoes in the heartland. Okay. All it takes is one big bad storm to flood the fields or delay or stop planting altogether. And we have a massive food process. Okay. Then look at all or food process, food shortage. Then look at all the uh, food recalls we're seeing lately. Okay. Left and right. Something's getting recalled. Pair that with the Chinese buying all the grain they can literally anywhere and everywhere. I'll give you this. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't. Right now, today, China owns, has in their possession, fifth, more than 50% of all the grain in the world. China has more grain than the other 194 countries combined. Okay, Yeah, we're one of those. All right. Brazil even came out this past week and told China they can't, they're not going to sell them any more grain because Brazil needs to keep some for themselves. Okay. You know, we see meat getting recalled left and right. Who owns the meat processors in the U.S.? China. Okay. Gee, something from China doesn't work. Hmm, there's a surprise. Okay. Except, expect to see the prices of food skyrocket and your choices to dwindle even more. Okay. Number nine, real estate. If you're looking to move, do it now. I said this last year, and we watched nearly 20% increase. So like I said yesterday, 200,000 now, house is now 240. We're probably not going to see the nearly 20% increase that we did last year, but at least a 10% increase in prices of real estate this year, very good, very good possibility, if not more. Okay, Why? Again, the pre-mentioned migration, right? More people coming into the country, there's more people in need of housing, supply and demand, as I talk about all the time, you know, the 
landlords, the sellers of houses or whatever are going to be able to get a premium price for whatever they want, and you're going to have to pay it if you want it. Okay, Couple that with the mass exodus of people from blue states and blue cities. All right, I'll give you this one if you don't think this is anything significant. In the last nine months, New York City has lost 300,000 residents. Okay, the last nine months. Between 2017 and 2020, New York City lost 200,000. So in three years, they lost 200,000. But in nine months, they lost 300,000. That tells you what's happening. People are, we're seeing a massive migration and it's going it, within the country and it's going to affect real estate prices. The prices in, of apartments and everything like that in New York City are going down. There's vacancies. The prices of property in Florida, Texas, Tennessee, South Carolina, Arizona, the big, the big uh, states where people are moving to are going up. If you're looking at moving to a red state, you, you better do it now because land is just getting less, more scarce and more expensive. Okay, number 10. This one I'm going to go out on a, a limb for. Water, okay? I think water is going to be the buzzword by summer, all right? Like I said, this one's totally a gut feeling. Okay, but we're going to have some sort of water crisis, and I think it's going to be relatively planned. Be it floods in some areas, be it droughts in other areas, God forbid a hack on the water system. Okay, When all the other pressure points that are being used against us to control us fail, i.e. COVID, i.e. food, whatever it be, the... Powers that be, let's just leave, leave it that, okay, are going to do something to call it, basically throw up a Hail Mary and say, okay, we've got to get the population under control. What can we control? What do they need? You know, well, they wouldn't listen to us with, with mandates, you know, the food people are doing, but well, we can do something with water, okay, and this kind of makes a little bit into what you guys talk about with harp all the time, right? Messing with the water supply. Maybe it's a Flint, Michigan type thing, okay? Maybe it's the, just the scare tactics of one, okay? Maybe it's water rationing, okay? But look at what they're going to use as proof, and they can. Lake Mead, okay, is at the lowest level of all time ever since the lake was made. There's not enough water. Lake Mead feeds Arizona, Southern California, Las Vegas, whole nine yards there. Oh my God, there's not enough water. Okay. They're going to use that. They're going to manipulate that and tell us we've got to ration water. We've got to do something. Remember, and this one kind of pairs into the migration issue. The more people that are here, the more housing we need, the more water you need. As wild as this one sounds, expect a water shortage in 2022 in some areas. So there you go, guys. There's pinballs, 10 predictions for 2022. If that doesn't make your head spin or make your head hurt worse after last night, I don't know. But those are things that I think you need to watch for. And certainly need to prep for. And yes, the live stream is still on for tonight. So I will see you all, if not beforehand, I will see you then. Have a great day watching whatever college football games haven't been canceled. Have a good one, y'all. Pinball out.